Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Rivas. I do political videos and stuff. And today we're going to be talking about the lunacy of post-election. Um, oh, I think that's a pretty good top, pretty good uh, title, lunacy of post-elections. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Trump has been pushing for this um, idea that he doesn't have to concede because he didn't lose. Um, Trump is now telling people that, hold on, I'm going to move my mic. Um, we, he's been telling people this isn't new, but he is pushing for the idea that um, we are not losers. We are going to take this to court. And he did. And he lost his last case. And it's just sad and pathetic. And my heart goes out to everyone in this whole election process. Um, Trump is a con man and Biden is a leech from the D Democratic Party. Um, my heart hurts. My heart hurts for our, our United States. And we're all coming out of here losers. Um, if anyone tries to sell you that otherwise, they're probably benefiting off of Biden and Trump. You know, they, they nobody from the working class world is is winning with any of these people it's it's the idea that biden for me my voting for him was that oh we're gonna be just a little bit better um and when i say little bit it's a lot better realistically like the guy um was going up against the worst candidate of the united states of ever so <laughs> it's it's not saying much but um it it still hurts and the lunacy of it all is that we have a president who still hasn't conceded um, but if that's that, if that's the craziest thing, um, then you haven't really been paying attention because I feel like this guy was doing insane stuff every day. So it's, it's a sigh of relief that we don't have to deal with that, but it still hurts that this is our process because this man is going to live with his fan base forever. They're, they're never going to leave him. Um, if anything, now he runs the, the party. If anyone tries to tell you that he doesn't, I'm, I'm sorry, but it, he is now the Republican party and, there's a fracture that we see with him not wanting to concede. I'm, I'm noticing Republicans are being very silent on his um, wrong in, on his wrong you know doings of saying like he hasn't lost. He lost. It's 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 sad. It maybe to his fan base, but it's um, apparent that they don't give a shit, you know. <laughs> and so, um, I again, my my heart just hurts for the United States. No one no one walks out of this a winner. Um, with either candidate, but the people who are still supporting this guy, you just kind of just, just feel, not feel bad for, cause if it's like a racist piece of shit, you're like, eh, whatever, who, you know, why did you like his racist policies? Um, I don't, I don't have pity for you, but there was coal miners in Michigan or, or what was it like the Rust Belt that genuinely believe this guy was going to fix their lives. And, and that shit hurts. That hurts, man. You, you don't want those people to suffer. They were desperate. And I'm not, I'm not taking away agency from their idiotic decision of picking this man, but he's a con man. And if you want to win those people over, which sort of kind of happened in the Michigans and Wisconsin's that went into the favor of Clinton, now going in the favor, uh, or that didn't go in the favor of Clinton, but now going in the favor of, of Biden, um, you saw that they, that those people really didn't trust this guy. And, and, but prior to that, they did, you know, we, we can't ignore that fact. Like every Michigan voter that went for, uh, Obama two times and now going to Trump is a racist. It's, it's just, I'm sorry. It's not true. And, and, and again, it doesn't take away the agency from those racist piece of shits who did vote for that. It doesn't take away the idea that there is no racism because there is. Um, but what I, what I've noticed in the media outlet and my family and friends have been brutal to the, uh, Trump voters. And I've been more, I, as time went on, I become more sympathetic. I, at first I was like, look at these fucking idiots, but he's a con man. And, and he, he told these people, he sold, he sold them the idea that I can bring back normalcy. And to a lot of people, um, that meant getting their jobs back as coal miners or not getting their out jobs outsourced. Like NAFTA pushed away many rural working Americans. And Democrats could have the party of the working class people because right now they don't. I'm not saying the Republicans do, and, and that's the shitty political climate that we have. Is that oh you don't you're gonna you say the Republicans do, but uh, uh the the you say you say the Democrats are the working party, and I say no, I I never said any of those those freaks are um 
uh, are the working class party. None of them are. And, and granted, and when I say, I always have to preface this, like when I, when I slander the Democratic Party, it's because I, I lie more with them and I believe they could be the working class party with the likes of AOC, Ilhan Omar. You have people, they, like you, you don't have to like them, but you can at very, very least admit that, hey, these guys aren't getting corporate sellout money. They're not going to outsource your jobs to China. As we speak, AOC, the uh, Alexandria Carlos Cortez district, um, Senate? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm also like zoned in because I feel like I'm doing good this match. I'm trying to get a chopper gunner. That's my that's my role. Um, but AOC is killing it with with young people and and getting the likes of of older voters to still respect and and beloved her. And as we speak, though, um. There's controversy with her because she made a sweater that was really overpriced, per se. Um, they, they they say it's overpriced. Sorry, what I was trying to say. But in reality, she charged it pretty evenly. It's unionized. She um, didn't outsource it to some kid in Thailand. So you had all these people being like, the oh, and by the way, the sweater said tax the rich or something. So you had people being like, oh, this lady's taxing the rich and she's charging you an arm and a leg for a sweater. But it's like, dog, that's how much it costs for a sweater that isn't outsourced in China being, being made by some damn kid who with like zero cents. Like these are the people we're pushing for and these are the people that I respect and I will vote for and I will push and, and canvas for. And and so it just pains because they don't know that. But the minute you bring that up, like, oh, you know that sweater was unionized and you know that sweater was made with uh, American workers. And it's like, Oh shit. Like the guys that are, are, you can see the principled people come out. The likes of Ben Shapiro was like shitting on it. And it's like, dude, you know, um, you know, you look like an idiot. You know, he, he didn't, uh, he didn't come out of this with like, um, sincerity. He just wanted to get some points with his team. Like, aha, look at us. <laughs> Like, dude, you, you, those people are, are actors. They don't care about you. The likes of Ben Shapiro, he doesn't care about you. And, and that's the lunacy of, pol of politics is that um, I agree with Ben Shapiro in some aspects, but I don't see any sincerity with that person. Dave Rubin, I do not. Um, I genuinely believe they just out there to dunk for their team and get paid by corporates. And that's not me. If that's you, that's you. That's not me. If you give me a check and say, go against your values, I, I can't believe that. Like, there's a debate right now that I'm seeing with candidates pushing for Medicare for all and people are shitting on this aspect. It's like, Oh, it's an unpopular sell or it's never going to go through, which is untrue. Um, it, it's, it, it's definitely possible to get through. It's going to be hard. And, and honestly, you're probably gonna have to compromise for just a single payer, which is fine because anything is better than the system right now or anything we're pitching is better than the system we have now. But that's a fight that I would believe in. If a corporate, uh, Big, a big pharma or a Coke brother came to me, which I doubt <laughs> ever. If they came to me and said, Hey, make, uh, make your videos about why Medicare for all is terrible. I would, I would never, never do that because I care about myself and I care about my beliefs and I truly believe in them. When you have the likes of Dave Rubin do a 180 on his policies. And for those who don't know the people I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying it like you guys know, these are just like the likes of, of internet personnel who are uh, very popular amongst the right and like libertarian and center right crowd. Um, and I really like those guys. I like them. Um, I think they had good moments. And that's the, that's the pathetic thing is this tribalism with politics. I think Ben Shapiro has said some funny things, and I liked it. Uh, Steven Crowder. Um, but I, I, I just fundamentally disagree with him on, on a plethora of items. And to sit here and hit people with this, uh, they have good moments. People will push me back on that and be like, what the hell is wrong with you? So there's this weird idea um, that these guys can't have any good, you know, like it's just, it, it shows the tribalism within our politics. Like I can't stand some of, I can't stand those guys. Some of the time there's a guy named Steven Molyneux. Oh my God. Atrocious. It's like, just, I, I, you know, it's funny though, as I'm speaking about all the people that I just can't stand, what am I doing? I gotta use this gun. Um, people like, oh man, I don't like this either. I want to flag check. Um, but yeah, I'm doing gun co. Um, 
the the likes of Stephen Molyneux are hilarious because that guy's actually pretty genuine. He's atrocious in his beliefs, but God damn, is he funny? Um, but yeah, so I, again, I'm, I'm kind of going everywhere with all these these things. But um, what what I was gonna say and and kind of go into a little bit more is the idea of the whole sick offense of Trump just is really painful to watch. But I, you know, I hope in due time that the, the, the Bidens of the world may get a little bit better to the point where maybe we might get a Bernie Sanders. Um, I don't think Biden will be that candidate. I think he was just the, um, pushing back of this lunacy of Trump. I think Trump could come back and, or some Trumpism and not even just Trumpism. Let me, let me, I guess, clear up the air. Um, Trump is crazy and his rhetoric is awful and he's a terrible person, but he was a standard Republican. He was a, a middle, like if people are mad at his rhetoric, I understand he can be raunchy. He can be tough. He can be cringy, but what he is not is a anti-establishment figure. He's, he ran on draining the swamp. He pushed for a anti-NAFTA rhetoric, right? And then he made a NAFTA 2.0. He said that we need to stop outsourcing from China and then had an American Day of America made products and did nothing for bringing those, those uh, outsourcing jobs back to the United States. Please, someone point to me what he did because I've been looking. I was so excited when he did that um, a, we're going to cut NAFTA bullshit. He didn't. He didn't. NAFTA, his, his new NAFTA deal, which he doesn't want to call NAFTA because it has bad connotation, his theater shows, his his the, theatric show, I'm going to look like the anti-establishment candidate when I'm not, and I will win. And he did. But your ver your words go only so far as where you can, right? And, and so I think a lot of people kind of see that this man is not the... Um, anti-establishment guy that we all praised and loved but bear in mind too he did come back pretty hard in the like he he shitted on the polls like that I, that's another lunacy of politics is that trump didn't like lose you know what i mean like he he he, he came back hard and he has the second most um votes of all time he's not a, a he's not a slump like this guy has power and that's why I was saying earlier is that he runs the he runs the party. Anybody who tells you otherwise is an idiot. He runs the party. He is the new Republican Party. I think as it speaks now, there was a poll done by oh, fuck. What was it? Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Um, there's this poll done where he talked where they asked people like, "Hey, if Trump wasn't in the running, who would you vote for?" And the motherfuckers voted for the Trump dynasty, which, you know, I got no, no complete issue with. Um, cause I, 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 I mean, I kind of called it in my mind. I'm like, they really like the family. I don't know why. I don't know why I don't like any of those people. They are literally just Trump. Um, but, uh, people love the family. They, the family of, of Trump got like crazy amount of, uh, polling. Um, so I, I, I like, I, I love the idea that people think that Trump is done and, and to the, what they call the brunch liberals, um, <laughs> who believe that, that Trump is, is, is dead and gone. And we, hey, we can go back to going to brunch. You guys are idiots and, and we're going to, we're going to lose to a Republican if we don't step our game. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping the likes of Biden bring in a, um, little bit of a push to liberalism left-leaning positions or center left at the very least. Um, cause Biden at, at the core is a center left president, but he is, uh, I, the bare minimum of center left. I mean, the Paris climate agreement, I feel like is just like a, a slam dunk. Like how do you not, you know, vote for that? But that's my opinion to me. Those topics aren't that radical, but to many they are. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, I think I've been talking for so much. So 
thank you all. I hope you have a great day and thank you for letting me talk and rant about politics to you all. Uh, I post videos every end of the month and every week I post these smaller freeform talked videos. I just posted one video about felonies. It's a pretty long one. It's pretty lengthy. It's kind of boring per se. Like it's not the most exciting thing, but I just really wanted to talk about it and show numbers. And, and my goal for this channel is next, next year, I'm going to have a season two where all my videos are going to be a little bit more eccentric. Um, still talking about politics, but I'm going to try to entice the viewers more. Cause I was noticing my videos are cool, but they're just me talking and, and I like doing those, but all the time, eh, maybe not. So, um, yeah, thank you guys all for listening and I hope, uh, you guys have a great day.